how was this approved? Brands don't want to reinvent the wheel, but in this case, the wheel needs to be reinvented, okay? All right, so today we're gonna to be doing a video on a topic that I am very passionate about, product packaging, specifically, horrid, shouldn't exist product packaging. So I saw Hannah do this video, her channel is Smoky Glow. I'm gonna link her video down below. I watched every single second, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I have some strong opinions on packaging, so I wanted to do this video as well, but definitely go check out her channel. I love Hannah's video, she's super smart, she talks about important topics and keeps people accountable. But if you're excited to hear me rant about some trash packaging, and you enjoy this video while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. All right, so as I was pulling products for this video and going through everything, there's definitely a couple brands that stand out where I have multiple products from them, one specifically, which we'll get into, but I just wanna say this does not mean I don't like the brand or the products themselves. For me personally, I love good packaging. Like there's something so satisfying to me about just great quality packaging and not just the quality, but just the design. If I had another career behind interior design, home staging, and all of my other, other careers I would have, I would love to get into product design. I find it fascinating. But just because I'm totally crapping on the design of these products doesn't mean the actual product is bad whatsoever. I do think though that if you are a consumer spending money on a product, Packaging is a big reason why some people buy certain products or continue to reach for them. A lot of these products I love the inside of, but because I don't enjoy the actual like experience of using them because of the packaging, I don't find myself using them as much as some other products that I do. So of course, even though all of this is literally just packaging, it does make a difference when you're spending your money on something or deciding what to use on a daily basis. So if I was a brand, obviously the quality of your products is important and everything else that goes into it, but the packaging I think is equally as important. Oh, I just dropped a big pallet. Well, that was the first product I was gonna talk about and this thing is a friggin' rock, so we'll see if it broke. Here's the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing broke because it is monstrous. Didn't break, better not have because of this packaging. Okay, so the first product is this BH Cosmetics Ultimate Matte 42 Shadow Palette. This thing is so friggin' thick. Let me just give you some comparison. I feel like the Tati is a pretty standard size. It is almost double. This thing reminds me of the Dell laptop computer I used freshman year of college. I was on the top bunk in the college dorm and probably about five times a week, I would accidentally drop my laptop off the top bunk. Don't ask me how that repeatedly happened on a very frequent basis, but it would fall off the top bunk and be totally fine because it was about that big. That's what this palette reminds me of. But the other thing I really don't like is how you have to press this button thing in to open it and half the time it just doesn't open or it's a pain in the butt to open. How did my hair just get stuck in this? All right, RIP hair. This was starting to come up and I thought for a second this whole time I might've been mistaken and there was another like layer of shadows under here. There's definitely not. This thing just popped up. Maybe that happened in the fall, but this is just a standard eyeshadow palette. Like there's no reason why this thing has to be so big and have so much empty space. And the weird thing is the empty space isn't even at the top, like giving it room between the plastic and the shadows. The empty space is at the bottom. Like literally there's just, I just saw it. I lifted it up. There's a big piece of styrofoam. Now that we got the dinosaur out of the way, let's put that away so it's not taking up half the desk. So this one isn't a specific call out to either of these products because I would say about seven out of 10 eyebrow brow gels or brow mascaras, whatever you want to call them, do this and it drives me freaking bonkers. When you're trying to get brow product in a small little area in a small little line and get it where you need it, no one wants something that is a mascara wand. And this is actually a small one. I went through my products and I've gotten rid of a lot of packaging that I don't like. So anytime a brow gel has this, I usually get rid of it because I know I'm never gonna use it. So this is actually a small one, but a lot of brow gels will put basically a mascara sized wand, which drives me insane because it's, especially if it's something that's pigmented, you just can't get it in the right spot because it is so freaking huge. And look at this one. This one is like half the size as by Catrice is the eyebrow filler. It's literally the length of half my brow. I just do not understand why anytime a brand is coming out with a brow gel, why can they not make it the size of this? Something like this. this is the CoverGirl Easy Breezy Brow. 
look at how tiny this is. I can get it exactly where I want it. Why? If you're a brand in 2020 and you're coming out with an eyebrow gel that has a mascara wand on it, please rethink all of your life choices. And again, that's the kind of thing where the actual product, like the product of this might be nice, but if the applicator is huge and I find myself having to go in with my finger or brush to like clean up my brows afterwards because the brow gel got product on my skin, it's just not something I'm gonna reach for again over brow gels that have a smaller wand. Setting sprays are another thing where if you don't have a fine mister on a setting spray, what are you doing? I know that some of them can be faulty and I think Hopefully that's what happened with me in this case, but this is the Marc Jacobs Recover Coconut Setting Mist. This one gives me full on splotches about that big all over my face. When I use it, I've tried this multiple times and I have tried like rinsing out the nozzle. Like if you take this off and try and run it under warm water, sometimes it's just clogged. I do know that a lot of setting sprays, you can just get faulty nozzles. I've had it where I'll love a setting spray and then I repurchase it and I definitely get faulty nozzle where it doesn't have as fine of a mist or something's off. So that can happen. But I just think, especially if you're a high-end brand and you're charging 30, $40 for a setting spray, you gotta have better quality control, okay? That happens a lot. Like I feel like way too often than it should with setting sprays. Not only that, but you know when you have a setting spray where it just comes out like a friggin' fire hose? This setting spray by Collab, I would say, is a perfect example of a product that is affordable, so it can be done at an affordable price. But the sprayer on here, it's such a fine mist. It's literally like the Hourglass Veil setting spray. So beautiful, it evenly disperses the product. I wish every single setting spray had a top like this. I feel like this is kind of a given and I think we're mostly past it now, but there are still some brands that come out with foundations like this where you literally have to just pour it out. 99% of the time you get way too much product. You end up just wasting a ton of product because you can't control the amount that's coming out. I absolutely despise when I have to swatch foundations for Foundation Friday videos when the top is like this. I do know that for some reason in other countries, like in a lot of European countries, the True Match Foundation and a lot of other L'Oreal foundations and Maybelline and Revlon are packaged completely different than how they are in the US. I wanna know why that is. I'm genuinely very curious why they change the packaging based on the country a lot of the times because Europe has way better packaging than a ton of drugstore foundations for the same foundation. For example, the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation, same thing as this, it's a pour out bottle, but Maybelline Fit Me in other countries is a squeeze tube bottle. It just blows my mind how there are still foundations like this coming out where you literally just have to pour it out. Why not put a pump on it? You know what I'm saying? And if you're gonna put a pump on it, don't put a pump on like this. There are a lot of foundations, I'm not just singling out Jouer, there are a lot of foundations that have the messiest pump for whatever reason, it either like leaks out of the top like this and just gets crazy messy. The other reason why I wanted to mention the Jouer Essential High Coverage Foundation is because of the mirrored top. This is something that it doesn't drive me as crazy as some of the other things I'm mentioning, but if you're gonna have a foundation and you put a mirrored top on it, you just have to either be constantly cleaning it so it doesn't look like this, or you just have foundation hands and you get foundation or makeup everywhere and it shows up a lot on a mirrored surface. So it does look nice like when you first get the foundation, so I, I get it. It is a pretty looking foundation, but as soon as you start using it, it just kind of gets messy. The Givenchy foundation I love also does that, so it's not just Jouer. A lot of foundations have like mirrored tops, and again, I get that it's like a glitzy, nice looking high-end kind of look. I guess it's just a choice they make. Every now and then there's a product that comes out where I'm just like, how was this approved? For example, the Revolution XX New Concealer. So I tried this in a first impressions video. I have tried to use this multiple times since that video. It's a really nice formula, which is unfortunate because I love the formula of it. It does have an extremely strong scent. That's a whole other topic. Oh, would you guys want to see a video on like the worst scented products? That could be interesting. This is just a total packaging flaw. They made this part way too small for the actual applicator on here because it's kind of like a curved boot shape. It's not a straight doe foot, so it doesn't just pop right out. You literally have to either try and like angle it and then you're almost like bending it too much or you just have to pull it out and hope the concealer doesn't fly all over the place. So because this shape, it just gets stuck way too easily in the bottle because of that shape. And you can see that the edge here comes out and I think that's what's doing it. They just need a wider mouth on this bottle. That's it. Other than that, the actual product is really nice. But again, I don't know how anyone who was testing this didn't think like, oh, that's super annoying. You can't just pull it out. You literally have to like 
pull it out and then you have concealer flying everywhere. Oh my God, even just pulling it out, I just got a whiff of the watermelon. It is killer. So for me, loose powders in general, I don't enjoy using because a big reason is the packaging. Also, they, a lot of them just don't work out for me, but the packaging on loose powders drives me a little bit insane unless they have like the mesh top kind of thing. Let me know down below if you guys would wanna see a video on my favorite kind of packaging, like what I think some of the best product design is because there are some powders that definitely have nailed it with the loose powder, but I left out loose powder because it's just kind of a given with loose powder. But something that drives me more insane is loose highlight packaging. I love this highlight. It's one of my favorites. It's the J-Cat Luxe Pearl Pearl Luminizer. Also love the Alima Pure highlight. Anytime there is a loose highlight that is in this kind of packaging, especially this one, so I don't know if you'll be able to tell without me like dumping it out. How am I gonna do this? There you go, I gotta shade it. So this one does have like little dots, kind of like a salt and pepper shaker. I would almost rather it actually not have that top so you can just lightly dip your highlight brush in. The thing with loose highlights is it's not a powder. You don't need a lot of it. You need the tiniest amount. So having packaging like this for a loose highlight, you either have to put it into a small lid like this and then half of it gets on the table or on the mic like it just did. It gets everywhere. It's very messy because it's a loose powder. So having a little, little shaker where you just get way too much product, it's not the best. And then this one is pretty you know, generic for a lot of loose highlight packaging where <laughs> It has this twist. Again, I'm trying to shade it so I can show you. There's a twist. So theoretically, you're supposed to twist it shut after you're done using it. Raise your hand if you've ever forgotten to twist a loose powder top and then you have a crap ton of loose powder or loose highlight just chilling in the top of here like what's happening right now. There's like half the jar just in the top here and then I kind of try and like tap it back down. I don't know. Let me know if you agree with the loose powder thing. I'm curious how many people it bothers and how many it doesn't, but I do feel like especially with highlights, having just a small pot, small potted highlight with that mesh top where you can just press your brush in and it comes out would probably be ideal. I've definitely seen loose powders use that method, but I don't think I've ever seen a highlight that uses the mesh top, so brands could be an idea for you. The other thing you could do is if you're gonna have kind of like a shaker top like this is just have two dots so that when you shake it out, you're getting just enough highlight and you can always add more if you need it, but you're not getting overboard highlight that is just gonna go to waste. Okay, so Hannah mentioned this one in her video and I totally agree. Cardboard box packaging, specifically the Benefit Hula products, all of their blushes, this whole line. And I think Years ago, it was kind of smart because it was super different and it definitely made them stand out. Like I think years ago, people liked this packaging, but the thing is the more you use it, you do sometimes have to kind of line up the cardboard. Like it almost gets stuck on the inside if you're not doing it at the right angle. And also it's cardboard packaging. So it's just gonna wear down, you know, over time. I'm not against all cardboard packaging. I definitely think it just kind of depends on the product and feel, but especially for high-end product, there's something about cardboard packaging that if you're paying 30 bucks for a bronzer, I just don't know if it should come in a cardboard box, you know? The other thing about this is the whole reason why it's this high is that it comes with a brush and that's a whole other topic that we're gonna get into. But when products come with brushes, I would say like nine out of 10 people probably don't use them or keep them. It's such a huge box for just a flat pan. Some brushes are nice. I just don't think they need to build it in to the product, you know what I'm saying? So like the, let's just talk about this. For example, Flower Beauty eyeshadow palette. Any palettes like this, Anastasia does it. Anytime an eyeshadow palette comes with a brush holder right here, first of all, most people don't use one brush for their entire eyeshadow look. So either way, you're gonna have probably multiple brushes you know, in a little brush holder or something. So unless you're traveling and you're being super minimal and you're just bringing one brush, building a spot for the brush that a product comes with into the packaging, I just think is unnecessary. If they wanna include a brush, and I know like a lot of people like the Anastasia eye brushes that come with the palettes, if they wanna include the brush, just include it on the outside of the packaging. Include it in the box as a bonus or include it in the outside of the packaging in like a little wrap. It drives me crazy when there's palettes like this and you just have this huge empty spot right there where it could be literally that much thinner. A ton of eyeshadow palettes do that. And I do think some people appreciate the brushes that it comes with, that's not what I'm saying. I just don't think they need to build it into the palette. Another example, Physicians Formula right here. I mean, it happens all the time. Physicians Formula is the brand that I'm talking about where I was pulling products and I was a little bit shocked 
how many I was pulling from Physicians Formula. I love their products so much that there's definitely products that I use from them consistently that I don't like the packaging, but the product is so amazing that I still use it. So I think that says a lot about their product quality. However, there is huge room for improvement with their packaging. Honestly, I think Physicians Formula would benefit so much if they did a whole rebrand, cleaned up their packaging a bit, made it more narrow because like what I'm about to show you is just insane how big and bulky all of their products are. If they did a rebrand, sleeked up their packaging and also added more shades, I think they would be one of the best drugstore brands. It's it's unfortunate. I still love Physicians Formula, love a lot of their products always. And some of these products I'm gonna mention are some of my all-time favorite products, but packaging needs some major work. So this is one of my favorite all-time highlighters. I'm actually wearing it today. It's been around for years now. I talked about this when I first started my YouTube channel. It is still one of the best highlights from the drugstore. So you have the actual highlight right at the top, right? Just a little tiny little thing right at the top. Then you open up this bottom part. Again, we have a slot for uh, a brush, a highlight brush, which is that big. And then you have this mirror set back so far in here. The packaging is cardboard over time, but obviously the metallic kind of like rubs off. I don't mind in this case as much because it does have a different feel to it. It's a little bit like heavier. It has a magnetic close, which I think is nice. I think it depends on like a bunch of different factors. I don't think all cardboard is bad, but I do think bulky packaging, like unnecessarily bulky packaging, is what drives me the most insane. The butter bronzer, same thing. It's just a huge compact for the actual product. This one is a little bit slightly more raised, so that might be the reason, but even then you can see the lip is right there, and then this goes way above that, and that's interesting because the brush, when I got it, it doesn't lay on top. The brush actually is underneath here, again with a mirror, but you have this huge area down here where the brush is supposed to be. It is one of those products that people talk about like when you're trying to find organizers for bronzers, this is one of the products that never fits in the organizer because of its round weird shape. I don't know, just those small things I think are important to think about. Exact same thing with their blush. I'm wearing this today, I like the blush a lot. It's their happy booster, I think it's called. Glow and mood boosting happy blush in the shade Rose. This is kind of like their go-to packaging is like the lift up with a massive deep brush spot. I don't mean to totally shit on Physicians Formula, but like, again, kind of absurd. This is the bronze booster highlight. The pan is actually lifted out. So if I like turn this, the pan's gonna fall. Oh, look, this one, I actually still have the brush in here so we can see what it is. Do we see how narrow that is? So even if they wanted to include a brush, I just don't think it needs to be that deep, right? Kind of the exact same complaint I have with loose highlights I have with loose pigments. I just never want to reach for products like this because they are so messy and it's not just these two brands. Almost every brand packages their loose pigments like this. NYX does it, MAC. I don't know if they do it because MAC was kind of like the first one to do it and they're trying to kind of dupe MAC or what it is, but it is so not pleasant to deal with. Oh my God, look at this one. I can't even show you. It's so full. It's going to spill all over the place. I'm scared. Look at how full that is. These are beautiful. A lot of loose pigments are beautiful. However, you get them all over the place when you use them. Not only when you're actually trying to dip your brush in or tap a tiny bit out, which again, you just can tap overboard, but also when you go to put the lid back on, I almost always have these spill all over the place. I kind of feel like loose pigments are kind of like brands don't want to reinvent the wheel, but in this case, the wheel needs to be reinvented, okay? This brow gel from Maybelline is notoriously, I think one of the worst packaging choices. The main reason is because it just doesn't go with the actual product and how you use the product. So this really isn't a brow gel. It really is more of a, it's almost more of like a liquid brow kind of pigment, like the one that NYX makes. A lot of brands make them, but Maybelline basically just put it in this packaging and called it a brow gel. Wow, mine's actually like glue check. So this stuff is so crazy pigmented that if you used the wand on this, you would have the gloppiest, just straight brown, straight black, whatever the color is, you would just have full on filled in like gloppy, sharpy looking brows. I love this product. It is super long lasting. It is waterproof. I used to use it all the time in videos. Like it's one of my favorite brow products. However, every single time I use this, I have to use a brow brush. I like the Anastasia number 12. And I take this out, I go in with the brush and then I get product off of this applicator on a brush and then I use it as I would. All right, and then the last product I'm gonna mention are Too Faced eyeshadow palettes. And 
initially, I really liked the packaging of these because they're so sturdy. I like that you can wipe it down, have a nice weight to it. It's basically a tin, but the thing with that is that almost all of my palettes I've gotten from Too Faced either kind of morph and they no longer fully close or you like drop it one time or you're traveling with it or something and the packaging just gets, I think, a little bit bent so that like the magnets or whatever it is don't fully line up anymore. I think that's probably the issue. And it's happening with almost every Too Faced palette I have like this. So it's not just like a one-off thing. So I like the idea of the tin, especially more than like the velvety kind of Anastasia packaging. I would much prefer something like this, but it's just, you know, a little bit, tiny bit flawed. So those are all of the products that I just shat on for about 20 minutes. If you do want to see this with my favorite product packaging, let me know down below. Or if you want to see like the scented video, the only thing with that one is I'm pretty sure I've gotten rid of a lot of products that are like, whoa, scented, I'm never going to use again. Nothing against these brands or these products themselves. The majority of the products I mentioned today, I really enjoy the formula of it's just things that could be improved with the packaging, you know? Let me know down below if you have any products that you just can't stand the packaging of. But if you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. If you're new here, I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Super time. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.